This is Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I am here today with a new dyeing video. What are you supposed to do when your friend asks for a pink pussy hat with DNA cables, but all of the stores are still out of pink yarn after the Women's March? Well, you dye your own yarn. I'm finding myself a little more nervous to dye pink than I expected. Pink isn't a color I dye a lot. I tend to play around with the blue, green, and purple family a lot more. And if you look at food coloring options, manufacturers offer many different shades of pink. Now, you would think that maybe you could just use a little bit of red food coloring, but red food coloring is so concentrated, so people can try to get a true red versus a pinkish red that you know that's really not the way to go you want to use a food coloring that is intended for a pink so what am i going to try well i have some pink lemonade kool-aid which i think would be fun to use just because uh it smells good and i haven't used kool-aid in a while and i have some of the mccormick's neon collection which contains a pink food coloring in, in the bottle. Um, I know Wilton's carries many different shades of pink, um, but I don't have time to run to the store and I am trying to work with what I've got in my stash. So this is what I'm gonna use and hopefully I can achieve a bright pink. Today I am going to set the dye in a method I haven't done in a while. I am going to microwave the yarn in the dye bath. Normally with immersion dyeing like this, I will you do it on the stove top, but I thought that it would be fun to mix it up a little bit. So I just added one packet of pink lemonade Kool-Aid to two cups of water in a microwave safe dish, and I am stirring this up. I am not going to be using any vinegar today because the Kool-Aid contains citric acid, which is acidic enough to dye for the dye to bind to the fiber. All right, and now I am going to add some of McCormick's Neon Pink. I hope I do not end up regretting the fact that I am not wearing gloves. All right, let's start with 20 drops. I hope the 20 drops of food coloring was not too much. This might be a bit redder than I want. Let's add the yarn and some more water and then we'll get a better sense of what the color was, is gonna be like. Okay, so I'm not wringing out the yarn. Right here I have 100 grams of undyed wool of the Andes yarn. Um, it's a Knit Picks yarn and I am submerging this into our pink dye. And yeah, this is looking pink. Uh, let's add some more water from when we pre-soaked it. This is where I sort of wish I had gloves it would just come in a bit handy. It's a bit of an orangey pink, but it is certainly, certainly pink. So that's good. Um, that's the first concern <laughs> that I had. I want the yarn, this yarn to end up being pink. And now I think I might want more dye. <sighs> if I was doing this live, then I could get your opinion. Oh, on on camera it's looking a little orange and it is kind of orangey but not nearly as orange as it looks on camera right now okay I am going to go for it and double the amount of pink food coloring drops so I'm going to add another 20 I'm going to do this by pushing the yarn aside 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 kind of mixing that 
and then move the yarn aside over here. Okay, so now we've got 40 drops of neon pink plus one packet of Kool-Aid. Now, what adding this dye after the fact has done is I know I'm going to end up with some tonal variation of color. Um, I found in a previous dyeing experiment that some of the pink food coloring does not require any uh, acid, additional acid at all. I actually dyed yarn without adding vinegar or anything when I was expecting all the food coloring to wash out. Um, this is something that you may have experienced if you spill red Kool-Aid on yourself. You might end up with a stain without even trying. But okay, I'm liking the direction of this color now and I think I'm ready to heat it up. But as I was saying, even if the, we get a tonal, a lot of tonal variation, I think that that will be really pretty. So I've now put my microwave safe container in the microwave and I have a silicone uh, microwave cover on top of the pot, but with a spout I might see some leakage of water. The goal is to get to not a super roaring boil, but a subtle boil and then to stop, let the yarn cool completely, and then microwave it again to heat it up, and again let it cool completely, or until the dye bath is clear and most of the dye is in the yarn. I can't remember if I mentioned that I pre-soaked the yarn for 20 minutes before starting this project, so most of the fiber should already be saturated. If you want to increase the amount of variation that you'll see in the yarn, the amount of tonal variation, then right before you microwave you can add a dry yarn to the pot and then go ahead and microwave and you'll see that since there will be some spots that are more dry you'll get more variation to the color. So five minutes was not long enough so I added an additional 10 for a total of 15 minutes and you can see that there's a few bubbles and look the water is clear so I do not need to do any additional heating time but I do want to make sure that this you know this whoo that's a little hot I want to allow the yarn to cool completely before I wash it and I can say that I've got a bright vibrant pink so I am thrilled with the color I am not the most patient person, so after 30 minutes of waiting for the yarn to cool, of course it wasn't going to be cool yet, but it was cooler, so I poured out some of the excess water, which was totally clear, and put the yarn in this basin so it can cool faster now, and then I can wash it. The yarn is finally cool and now I can rinse it. Um, so I'm rinsing the yarn with lukewarm water and you can see that none of the color is coming out um, which is awesome because that means it's bound to the yarn. And now I'm going to add some liquid dish soap. Sprinkle it in there to try to like rinse out any of the excess citric acid and any of the other like extra stuff that could be left on the yarn. Now when I have the yarn in there the water looks like it's pink but you can see as soon as I remove it that there's actually no color. The reason why you want to wait until the yarn is cool before you wash it is you don't want to risk felting the fibers. This is 100% wool yarn. It is not super wash so with too much heat and agitation I could end up with a felted mess. Um, now I am going to continue to rinse this until I get rid of all the soap and if there's excess dye you would wait until the water runs clear and then I will hang it up to dry and come back and show you what we've got. Check out my vibrant, vibrant pink. This is perfect to turn into a genie DNA pussy hat. I am very excited to cast on and get knitting. But before I start Let's check out some of the subtle tonal variation. 
I didn't untie some of the areas that uh, came tied with the undyed yarn, but there are some patches of paler pink um, amongst the yarn. But overall, it's a pretty consistent color. As I said previously, if you want more tonal variation, you can add the yarn dry to when you start heating it. Um, this is something that's easier to do on stovetop when the dye bath is already hot, but I am very happy with this pink. There's a reason why it's worthwhile to reskein yarn once you've dyed it. It helps spread out the variation and so it can make it more apparent when you have tonal variation and give you a better sense of what you can expect when you knit it up. Overall, this is a pretty solid color, but you can see that you have the hallmarks of a beautiful kettle dyed yarn here um, where you have a single tone but the depth of color and the saturation is slightly different in areas. Um, I'm thrilled to present with you with the Genie Pussy Hat. This is a pussy hat with a DNA cable running up both sides of the hat. And so if you make this pattern, which is available for free on Chemnitz.com, you can show your support for the Women's March and the March for Science that's coming up on April 22nd, 2017, which happens to be Earth Day. So I hope that you might join me in supporting the March for Science, and I can't wait for you to check out the Genie Pussy Hat and the other Genie DNA beanies, haha, uh, knitting patterns that are available for free at Chemnitz. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching this dyeing video.